Jerusalem, your land now. Well, let's speak now to Juliet Tuma, Communications Director at the UN Relief and Work Agency. Uh, hello to you. Uh, you know you've just returned from the Gaza Strip. Um, could I ask there, we heard from our correspondent that the fighting uh, in Gaza has been very intense. So just take us through the practicalities of getting aid in to the people who need it. It's uh, become uh, one of the most challenging and complex humanitarian operations that the UN manages around the world, um, delivering aid into the Gaza Strip, but also because it is very, very difficult to deliver aid under fire, and there continues to be uh, vast areas in the north of the Gaza Strip that are uh, almost entirely inaccessible, and much more needs to be done to get humanitarian assistance to the north. So, Julia, are you heartened uh, by at least the, the Qatari deal to at least get some aid in today with the agreement and also, crucially, some medical aid to the hostages? I mean, how easy is that going to be? Look, any uh, humanitarian assistance allowed into the Gaza Strip is very, very welcome. Um, the needs on the ground are humongous. Um, in the south of the Gaza Strip, all you can see is these um, makeshift structures that have mushroomed over the past weeks because people were fleeing areas in the middle mainly uh, in uh, search of safety. So there are overwhelming humanitarian needs and mothers and, and fathers um, and the elderly told me that there isn't uh, the, the medicines for uh, chronic diseases. So any shipment of medicine is going to be extremely welcome, also because the private pharmacies uh, continue to be closed. And as we've been hearing, of course, the, the weather conditions uh, have deteriorated. So in terms of what's needed and presumably diseases, as well as people suffering from the effects of cold, um, are, are very much an issue in Gaza at the moment. People are very cold indeed. I visited one of our shelters, um, a, a, a school, an under school turned uh, shelter with like thousands of people who have just come there and set up also in the school these um, little structures. And people said that they were cold, and it indeed, I felt it, it gets quite cold at night, and they needed very basic things like blankets, like warmer clothes uh, for themselves and for, for their children. Uh, can you just take us a little bit through uh, the, the well, uh, talked about the practicalities of getting this aid in? So we know that the aid will have been flown in from Qatar, it's landing in Egypt. What is the process for that now? Look, on that one, UNRWA is uh, not involved. And what we are involved in is to facilitate the delivery of humanitarian assistance that is now coming via two crossing points. Um, and even though we've seen a slight increase, which is, of course, very welcome, we are not yet at the threshold of the very minimum um, that we had before the war, which is the 500 trucks. So we're far below that. Uh, and there needs to be much more humanitarian assistance and also commercial supplies uh, so that the private sector can reopen. When I was there, I could see that there were like informal markets here and there, little stalls selling vegetables, selling um, canned food, but the vast majority of the shops and the markets, the supermarkets were, were closed. So the humanitarian operation in Gaza cannot do it alone, given the huge, huge needs on the ground. Juliet Tima from UNRWA, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you.